sometimes you might want to have a knowledge management system where you have a backend system where you can manage all the content and then you actually have a website where people can take advantage of all the knowledge that you collect over time and they can use that knowledge to actually learn something. In this video, we're looking at how you can connect Raindrop, that is a bookmarks management system, to Notion and Super through Make. So these are the four key tools that we are using. The first one is Raindrop, where bookmarks and collections are saved and stored. The second one is Notion, where actually we use the Notion system as the backend for the final website that is displayed in Super. That's the third tool in our toolkit today. And we connect everything automatically from Raindrop to Notion through Make, hence using the Raindrop and the Notion APIs. So let's dive right into it, starting from Raindrop and looking at what's the structure of Raindrop and how you can organize bookmarks, namely saving content from the internet in Raindrop. This is the Raindrop interface and Raindrop is one of the smoothest tools that you can use to capture knowledge from the internet. They have a browser extension and you can categorize bookmarks in collections. Collections are folders essentially and you can have many collections structured within sub collections. So in here on the left sidebar menu you would see you have bookmarks and bookmarks are organized in collections and you can see craft for example is a collection and it can have multiple sub collections right there and the hierarchy is practically infinite you can have as many sub collections as you want for the purpose of this video and this specific use case we are looking at this collection in raindrop that we want to save to notion and sync automatically and this is the music tag bookmarks dashboard. So that's a one level collection that has two sub collections, as I can see here, and maybe other sub collections within it. So when you open a collection, you will then see all the bookmarks within that collection or all the sub collections within that collection, depending on the structure. So in this case, we can see that the loudness meter plugins collection has five bookmarks in here. And the bookmarks are web pages. When you click on them, it will open a new tab with the web page displaying on your computer. So our idea is to sync bookmarks saved in Raindrop in this specific collection to a Notion database or multiple Notion databases so that they can be displayed automatically in Super in a website. And this is the final website that we have. And to have this structure, we have a Notion page composed of two key databases, collections and bookmarks. And this is mirroring the data structure of Raindrop, essentially, where we have collections. And for each collection, we can have multiple bookmarks. So if you look at the collections database, we see we have some main folders, subfolders, and all folders with the parent-child relation. So we are essentially recreating the same structure as in Raindrop, so that we can mirror all the bookmarks in the same way as they are in Raindrop. And whenever you open a collection or folder you will see we have two hidden properties the raindrop id that is essential for us to make the sync work properly and then within each collection we have a template that is automatically applied that has a breadcrumb menu at the very top that you can create by using the slash breadcrumb command in notion and it also has a view of all the bookmarks for that collection right here on the page very similar to what you see in Raindrop. So when we look at the collections database, we will see we have these two templates. If it's a parent folder, then we use this template here. And you can see this has child folders within it instead of bookmarks. And if it is a child folder instead, we use this template. And this template has already the breadcrumb menu and all the bookmarks within it. So in this way, we can have this structure with parent and child items. In addition to the collections database, we also have the bookmarks database and there is a direct relation between collections and bookmarks. So the bookmarks database is where all the bookmarks, namely the web pages, the links to those web pages are stored. And whenever you open one of these, you will see these are the properties. So first we link to the folder, that's the relation property, where we connect bookmarks and collection. So from here, you can select exactly which collection or sub collection this bookmark is part of. Then you have the description, simple text, and you have super link. That's a URL property. And we call it like this because 
whenever we have this name on a URL property, and that property is displayed on the super website cards, that tells super to open that page on a new tab instead of opening the notion page. That's what the behavior looks like. So when you open a collection, if you have that link, then when I click on this, you will see that a new tab has just opened that links directly to that website. And that is thanks to this property here, that is super link. If it has a link, which in our case, it will always have a link because that's a bookmarks management system, then it will open the page directly from the super website. And now we have some more properties like the parent folder. If the folder or the collection is a child, then here we reference through a rollup the parent folder and we have the raindrop ID again, essential for our automation that we are looking at, that we are looking at in a few minutes to sync the data properly. And inside the page, we have an image that we get from raindrop as well, and that we display on the cards directly here, both in Notion and hence as a consequence on the final super website. And that's all there is to it in this system. And this page is shared to the web because that's essential to connecting it to super. You can find a full walkthrough of how to use Notion and Super in the description of this video if you want to learn more about it. And then we connect everything from Raindrop to Notion through Make. So you can think of Raindrop as the capture step of the Para method. Raindrop is capture for quick capturing of bookmarks. Notion is more of the organization part. If we think of the code framework in Para, capture is Raindrop, organize is Notion, and distill is still Notion and then we express in super where the final website is and when people can look at all these bookmarks and collections in an easy to remember URL. So this automation seems very long, although there are the same steps repeated over time. And we need to have all these steps because in Raindrop, the hierarchy of collections can be pretty much infinite. We can have as many sub collections as we want. And so we never know how many sub collections we need to process in the automation. And that is why we have all these levels. But once we understand one of these levels here, we will understand all the scenario or automation properly. And the first step or the trigger is a raindrop module that is watch bookmarks. And here you can see I have connected my raindrop account. We have the collection that is all bookmarks except trash because that's the only way we can actually get bookmarks added in the raindrop. We can't specify a specific collection. And so as a workaround, we use this tag that is music tag. That means only process bookmarks that have a tag music tag. So if you look at Raindrop, we have some tags and whatever a bookmark has the music tag tag that will be sent to Notion. And then we have all the other options are default. Next up, we search for the bookmark in Notion. So that's a search objects module from Notion and database is the bookmarks database that we just saw and we search for that bookmark by the raindrop ID, which we also save in Notion. And that's why that is a handy way of using a unique identifier to search for something in Notion. So raindrop ID, that is a number, number equals, and here you need to make sure that you use the number data type. And then you have ID that is mapped from the raindrop module. And we only wanna have one result from this search object. Otherwise it means there are duplicates because the range of ID is always unique. Next up, we have a router. So a router is under flow controls in Make, and it allows you to split different paths. And we have two main paths in here. The first path is if it exists, that means the Notion page ID mapped from here exists. Then we go this route. If the Notion page ID does not exist like that, then we go this route because if it exists, then we need to just make sure that the hierarchy of the collection for that bookmark is appropriate, otherwise we update it. And if it doesn't exist instead, we go this route because we also need to create that bookmark. So let's start from the first route here. And we have a search object module that is search collections. So in here, we do a very similar step to the previous one that is we search through the collections database this time by range of ID number equals collection ID and that is mapped from the raindrop module as you can see there. So we look at the collection for that bookmark. And in here then we have another router and that is if the collection exists, so Notion page ID exists, 
then we go this route and we just update the bookmark and that's it because we know that the collection is already there and it's already in motion so we don't need to do anything else but if the collection does not exist that is page id does not exist then we go this route we get the collection from raindrop so that's a raindrop get collection module and we get the collection id so that we can get metadata about that collection so that we can create that collection in notion to the create database item module that's the collections database and the folder name will be the title of this collection we have raindrop id that is the id and for now these are the only data that we save there and then if parent collection exists that is if this collection is a child collection then the parent collection property will exist and that means that we need to get the parent collection again using the get collection module to we'll get the parent collection we search for the parent collection in notion and then another router here if the parent collection exists then we just update the new collection to link it to the parent collection otherwise we create that parent collection in notion and we continue at the same process all over again so if parent collection exists then we get that parent collection we search for the parent collection if it exists we just update the collection to create the relation between the parent and child if it doesn't exist then we create that collection and we continue over and over again and that is because of the pretty much infinite hierarchy of parent children collections that you can have in raindrop that we want to mirror in notion properly now let's get into the second branch in here if the bookmark doesn't exist in Notion then we don't just need to look at the collections but actually we need to look at the bookmark and search for the collection of that bookmark and then we're gonna create the bookmark if the collection exists we create the bookmark we add the image that is the append page content module and we add the database ID that is the bookmark we add an image type and the image URL is taken from a range of as you can see the module put setting here and then we have a error handler because sometimes the raindrop media url is not valid and it can't be embedded in notion and so we just catch this error through append the page content and in that case we just append the paragraph with the media url from raindrop so that the person doing the organization and distillation of content in notion can actually see the media url and if it works then it can embed that url otherwise they can choose another picture from the internet and that is if the collection exists but if the collection doesn't exist then we first get the collection from raindrop we then create that collection in notion we then create the bookmark add the image and repeat again with the error handler and if there is a parent collection then we go and repeat the process that i explained before here at the very top so we need to look at all the parent collections and create all those parent child relations within notion to reflect the structure in the range of that is all the way through it it seems complex although there are only a few steps at the beginning that we need to set up for the logic to work properly and then all the other steps are essentially routers and exists or doesn't exist logic to make sure that all the hierarchy is respected in notion as well and this runs every two hours you can make it run as often as every one minute or as infrequently every one day or every few days depending on your preference and everything that then goes to notion can be processed manually to make sure that the image is proper um, that the link is proper and whatever is in notion will then display on the super website that is here it doesn't have much styling you can see here at the very top there is the breadcrumb menu there is the search bar where you can search across all the collections and bookmarks in this website and then you have here the main homepage with the main collections that you want to display here and when you click on any of those collections you will open the page where you will see all the bookmarks and you have all these bookmarks and you can open the bookmarks and look at the web page saved originally in raindrop and now living in notion and displayed in a clean way and without any overwhelming content in the final super website where you can also customize your domain if you purchase a paid plan and with a paid plan you can also use custom css and javascript to make the website look and feel exactly like you envision it and that is all there is to it in this case study of using raindrop 
Notion, Super, and Make with the APIs to create a knowledge management system that is scalable and that can take the guesswork out of the way and implement effectively the code framework from the para method, if you like, in a very streamlined way automatically. Thank you very much to Bruce Tumbling for making me share this case study with the world. You can check out the website, the Music Tech Resources website in the description of this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them down below. Thank you for watching for now and see you soon.